What is up, y'all? Happy Tuesday, or excuse me, it's Thursday. <laughs> My days are all over, close to Friday. What is up, y'all? I hope that you are all doing well. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Uh, my name is Idara Ekpo. I am going to be your host for today. And we are joined again with fine art photographer, Bella Kotak. Bella, how are you doing today? Hello, happy to see you. Day two, here Day we go. Day two. <laughs> if y'all missed yesterday, as soon as you finish with today, you have to go back and go to YouTube, be hands, and make sure that you rewatch the replay of our live yesterday. It was honestly mind blowing. I just, I'm still recovering and I'm not even ready. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for today, but we're just going <laughs> to dive right into it. We had fun. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It was fun. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. <laughs> we definitely will. Um, and it's just for y'all that weren't, don't know who Bella is. Um, she's a fine art photographer who's going to go ahead and take us through her process of compositing editorial fantasy pieces in Adobe Photoshop. Um, so if you are joining us today, especially if you're over on YouTube, make your way over to Behance so that way you can join the conversation. I see some people are in the chat. Make sure y'all go ahead and let us know where you are joining from. I am joining from sunny and hot Phoenix, Arizona. Bella, where are you joining from? I am joining from sunny and warm Oxford, England. <laughs> Polar opposites. <laughs> I mean, we can't we can't compare. Today's a nice, gorgeous day, but uh, like I've been to Arizona and I it's hot. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's it's like we're getting towards like we're in the hundreds now. Like we're moving making our way into that hundred. We know it'll be one ten. Maybe we'll hit one twenty this summer. So I'm oh not. My gosh. Not, <laughs> Marcy knows it will only get hotter from here. <laughs> so welcome back, y'all. So just drop in the chat where you are joining from. And again, if you are all the way on YouTube, make your over make your way over to Behance, B.net slash Adobe Live. And just for us to get started, make sure that you start your day with the in the creative encore of the Photoshop Creative Challenges hosted by Sam Peterson every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. You want to make sure you tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. And then if you miss the Adobe font stream, it is okay. Like I mentioned before, there's a replay. You can watch everything again on YouTube or Behance. So make sure you tune in and find those replays so you can get those skills. So Bella girl, what are we going to be to do? What are we going to be doing today? Or even before that, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself, show a little bit of your work, especially for those that are joining us today. Okay, so hey everyone, I'm Bella Kotak, a fine art fashion photographer based in England and also in America. So I'm just pulled up my website here to give you just a quick brief rundown. I shoot a lot of fairy tale, fantasy inspired art. Um, a lot of it, honestly, is just like my ode to spring, uh, which is like one of my favorite seasons. So there's a lot of flowers, a lot of changing seasons, a lot of whimsy. And I love fashion and creative, just any creative outlet. So I work mm -hmm. with a lot of designers to create, you know, fantastical images together because it is fun. Oh, it's so yeah. beautiful, too. I was... I'm going to say it again because I said it yesterday and I'll probably say it every day after that, <laughs> after today. <laughs> but when I saw Bella's work, as y'all can probably tell, like my mouth dropped. It is freaking amazing. It is so stunning. Oh, Bella, this you. is just like, and I was actually, I went on your Instagram yesterday and I was looking at like some of your growth because I know you talked about when you started, you were doing more of the mm. self-portraits. So, so to see where you came from and where you are now, the journey and the growth is honestly mind blowing. So kudos to you, girl, because it's beautiful work. Thank you so much. So honestly, a lot of the stuff that I've shoot is pretty much on the side of the road. A. <laughs> <laughs> like these are literally in like in an alleyway in a park um in my living room <laughs> and uh, as it was this is the picture that i worked on in my last adobe live 
Wow. So yeah, that's what we did because that was all about composites. Uh -huh. So yeah, and then these flowers are discarded flowers from someone's wedding. Wow. So yeah, a lot of my work is literally just put together like hodgepodge from different things that I find or source. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like I'm somebody that really tries to create something out of like not much. Yeah. And I really like the boundaries of like not much because yeah. it makes you be more creative. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. And then plus it's not as much. I feel like oh, I think I, I might have said this yesterday, but I feel though sometimes we stress about having the equipment, having access to certain locations or yeah. expensive things that are going to make our work, you know, better and dreamier or whatever the case might be. But like you said, the, like you really don't need much. And it's so crazy because I was looking at your BTS um, highlight on Instagram and mm. seeing how like literally on the side of the road like people are driving by <laughs> and you have someone literally in a bush. On the side of the road. <laughs> so it is phenomenal work so thank you so much for joining us again today i'm really excited for what we're getting into um yeah. i'm seeing the chat real quickly we got people dropping where they're calling in from yay um sam is from la sunny but not too hot at the moment <laughs> at the moment hopefully it doesn't get too much hotter um, I'm seeing Francisco is calling from San Francisco. Um, I'm seeing DC, Florida, Montreal, everywhere. This is so great. Welcome y'all. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Bella, do you want to start with catching up with what we did yesterday and where we're at before we move into anything else, anything new? I think that's a great idea. Um, all right. So here is the place that we started off yesterday. This was the beginning which i believe is on this layer over here so that's where we started obviously not quite but mm -hmm. you know there i shot this with a 15 millimeter ca uh, lens on a canon r5 mirrorless camera mm -hmm. and whenever i shoot as i explained yesterday i like to shoot around the subject so that i can expand the frame so then i can control the crop mm -hmm. so we were just going through that process yesterday and as we went through it i was sort of going on a lot of different tangents to sort of like just address different obstacles that we all hit in the editing journey so we covered a lot of topics about like just yeah oh hang on <laughs> <laughs> just uh yeah pretty much just how we expand how we replace different body parts how if you're bringing one image over from um one image over into this one and if they if it looks different in terms of like white balance, how to correct mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. um, and just how to make the most of what you have. So we yeah. stretched this out as well and so on. So today's focus is going to be just finishing this up. So I've got it here in another file. Um, this bit that we actually reached yesterday was setting up a cleaning guide. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of started marking out exactly what I would look out for when I'm cleaning because I thought that this is just a practice that I do regularly anyway to like make it a game for myself so mm -hmm. we can like get this part done fast yeah and um I'm really happy that actually a lot of people who watched this yesterday were saying that it actually helps to see exactly what you see yes yes that was probably I mean I was gonna say it's probably the number one tip but I really can't rank all the tips you gave us yesterday but this is so important for I find it to be really important because um, when I usually go in and do some of my cleanup, I'm just doing it in the moment. I don't take a moment to really analyze the full image. And then, like you said, analyze it, take a step away and come back and then give yourself that 15 minute um, kind of time limit to get it all yeah. done. So 100%. that is really nice to be able to, as something that I plan to take into my work, my workflow, because it's just like you give yourself time to really analyze it and then you give yourself time to finish it. <laughs> yeah. So I actually think I'm going to just write a little note so that people know exactly like what stage of the process we're on. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that this is actually really important to, to just have an idea of workflow. Because um, I actually have a very specific way that I work. So mm -hmm. for example, let's just change this to like a Helvetica. Oh, and it's in white. There we go. Uh, oh, there we go go and just make it nice and bold so I can just share that okay 
so the part that we're on right now this is like the composition part so this is where um we're really spending a lot of time setting up the base of what we're working on mm -hmm. um i think it's really important because this then makes everything else so much easier and the idea is that you don't come back often like once it's done you you're you know it's you, you're just saving yourself a lot of time yeah so step one is composition step two is clean so we're actually on sort of on step two we're still mm -hmm. we're kind of like on the line between step two and step one got it after that we're going to be liquefying so i'll just quickly just cover a few things that uh, i come across when i'm liquefying what i look out for mm -hmm. and we'll bounce between this image and another image as well so to keep it interesting <laughs> i see Keep it spicy. Uh, keep it spicy. <laughs> um, after liquefying, that's when I do go into dodging and burning. Got it. So dodging and burning is all about, you know, just evening out the light and shadow and mm -hmm. just making sure everything falls pretty. Um, so we'll cover that topic very briefly because it's a big topic. Mm -hmm. um, after dodging and burning is my favorite which is color toning. Yay, it's my favorite so, too. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited about this portion of um, today. It's going to be a lot, but we're going to, I'm not going to cover as much as I would if, you know, I was like teaching a class mm -hmm. because we don't have the time. We have an hour and a bit. And so we're going to make Get it efficient. It. We're going to, that's, and that was the big, that was what we talked about yesterday, being efficient. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So color toning, we're going to cover, I think about, two or three, most likely three, maybe four adjustments that I really love. And that really can really very quickly elevate your picture um, to a place where, you know, like you're wondering, oh, how do I do this? I'm gonna show you how. Got it. Yeah. And after color toning is, there's color correcting. So I think we're gonna spend a little bit of time here because it's just important to know. And the last step, which I really, really wanna to get to, and I, really feel like even if there's like a timer we can set because i think this mm -hmm. is really important is the well, there's sharpening which is after that but we'll figure that out mm -hmm. but i think we'll put sharpening and because it goes together okay i think for social media okay yeah so this is where we're going to cover like what size do i make the image when i share it to instagram and facebook and how do you get that sharp crisp look because i know mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle with this yeah our photos go online and i've come across so many accounts where the picture is bomb but the uh the quality is not so good it's not there <laughs> and that's okay as well but i'm just going to share how i do it and uh, i think it's been working for me so far all right perfect yeah. we have a full game plan here so i'm we excited do. yeah Okay, so when it comes to cleaning, there are two tools that I use the most. Now, those two tools are the clone stamp tool and the healing tool. And the um, spot healing tool as well. Mm -hmm. Now, while I go on in this life, I really just encourage people to get involved in the chat. Share like any questions that you have because yes. that will really help the flow. Yes, yes. If y'all have any questions, please be sure to drop them in the chat. And then again, if you are on YouTube and you want to be engaged, you want to ask Bella these questions, come to Behance, b.net slash Adobe Live. So you can ask those questions. This is your time. Utilize it. <laughs> so make sure y'all yes. put those questions in the chat for her. Yeah, 100%. This is your time. So now the reason why I'm actually really focusing on cleaning this first before we expand, because as you can see, there's like gaps here that need mm -hmm. to be filled yet. So we are going to be using the content aware tool, um, which is over here, the content aware. Oh, where did it go? Ah. Oh my goodness, I say it and then I forget. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh no, I knew it was going to perfect. <laughs> you'll find it, you'll find it. We'll find it, we'll find it when it comes yeah, to finding it. If we don't exactly. find it, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't find it, somebody will tell you where it is. <laughs> no, please guys, I'm going to buy myself some time. So <laughs> the goal was to use a content word too. A couple of those places. 
<laughs> you know, I was so nervous yesterday, but I had so much fun. And today I felt calm and I, I felt like something was going to happen because no. it always happens. <laughs> when well, you feel Sam calm, did say you can press um, control F to search for tools. Ooh, okay. I will look into that. Thank yes. you, Sam. Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can, these big, big footprints, which is one of the things that you really want to get rid of in a magical scene. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use a combination of the healing tool and the clone stamp tool. So right now yeah. what I'm doing is sourcing from any part of the image that doesn't have that, keeping it sort of flat. There's okay. more things happening here. So I know that moving forward that I'm going to be adding some texture okay. on that side. So right now it doesn't have to be perfect. It just sort of has to be like done. Okay. Yeah. So whenever I am cleaning anything, I always do it on a blank layer. So I said this yesterday, which is if you can, please don't like create a whole new layer um, or duplicate a layer and work on that because that's a very destructive way of working. Mm -hmm. Ideally, what you really want to do is have a blank layer. And then when you have your clone stamp selected, you want to make sure that the sample is set to current and below. Yes. That is what will source everything from below that layer and help you, you know, um, uh, utilize this uh, non-destructive way of working. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same with the healing tool. So with the healing tool or the spot healing tool, as I have selected right now, the sample all layers is selected. So that just makes it exactly, because this is a sample all layers, this will sample any layers that are Above um, open. Or below. Yeah, that are visible above it. So ideally, you want to make sure that there nothing is visible above the layer that you're mm. working on. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I'm just gonna label this cleaning. And so between like the two, those two tools, this is what I pretty much um, would do, which is work meticulously, probably a little bit slowly. But the idea is that you just want to, like in my case, I just set a timer because it's a uh, you know. A bit of a if you're somebody who's like really like likes zen things this is probably like <laughs> right up your street <laughs> but if you're somebody like me that just has to like hurry up and get on with it yeah i need a timer <laughs> because i'm not out like i'm that way too like i need to be intentional about setting a timer because i'll spend way too much time and i have to get to poem like all right you're cut off you're done <laughs> yeah and actually that's a really good point because the reality is um, many of our images aren't going to be printed uh, depends mm -hmm. depends um obviously so if the image is going to live on somewhere like social media there is literally no point zooming in here yeah and then doing that like there really isn't you want it to sort of stay a little bit far away see what's happening and then just yeah. address it um as you can notice what I'm doing right now, I am sourcing from near the area that I'm covering. Mm -hmm. So if like, for example, if I put, if I source from here, you can see if I make my brush bigger, I can see a preview of what that is showing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it, Photoshop set up so that it will show you the preview and sometimes it won't. So if you're somebody who finds this a bit bothersome seeing the preview, then a way to take that off is to go over here to window, go to clone source and go click show overlay. Mm -hmm. So if you turn that off, you will not see that. And if you want to see it, and I personally like to see it because Same. when I'm working on like edges, it's nice to know where it's going to line up. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. So it's window clone source. That's where Perfect. it is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to close that. Okay, so pretty much, as I said yesterday, when it comes to cleaning, the goal here is to focus on any element in the picture that is distracting you. No, that is distracting you, actually, yeah, mm -hmm. distracting you as yeah. the creator, and that you feel will distract the viewer from the overall experience of them viewing the image. Absolutely. Yeah. So anything that I feel like is standing out a little bit too much goes. And this is exactly what we would do if we were doing a portrait. So I'm going to segue us over to a portrait now. Let's make so our way. <laughs> let's go. So that's pretty much what I would do for the scene. And I will go ahead. 
Oh, actually, there's a couple of there's a couple of things. There's one more thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if, for example, you are struggling to source from somewhere, then what I would do is maybe find a clear bit of this from like mm-hmm. another picture and bring it in mm-hmm. and mask it in. That's one way of doing it. Another way is I could just source a bigger like something like here brush nope source like that and then with my clone stamp tool brush it over and if i needed to i could just transform it and move it around a bit Mm -hmm. so it doesn't look like it's been copied directly over Mm -hmm. oh i like that tip i like that tip yeah if you're working especially with nature this is something Mm -hmm. you can absolutely do no one will know. No one will know. No one. How would they know? How would they know? <laughs> exactly. How would they know? That's a, that, that's a good one. Um, so true. So yeah, that's something that I often do. I'll just like quietly source from somewhere else, put it there, and then just transform it. Mm-hmm. And it's a mystery. Voila. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn those off and turn this on because that's what I've like sort of already done. Mm -hmm. And it was with the exact same things that I did before. So Mm -hmm. we'll figure it out as we go. Now we're going to jump over to this picture. Now this is a portrait also captured in Namibia, which is where we captured the other one. Mm -hmm. And this girl like kindly modeled for me. She's a waitress. She's so nice. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but look at her she's like, beautiful goddess oh my gosh yeah so i thought she would be the perfect example to show how we would use those same tools the clone stamp tool and the healing and spot healing tool on a portrait because mm-hmm. that's where um a lot of people come you know into uh some tight spots yeah okay so I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I'm just going to group all of these so we don't have anything distracting us. In this new layer, we're going to label it clean. And we are going to use the spot healing. Now the spot healing and healing tool, for those of you who don't know, um, the healing tool is really fun. Mm-hmm. It basically just gives you more control from where you source from. So you can hold down the Alt key. And again, same settings. So the healing tool selected. I've got my sample to current and below. Mm-hmm. I actually have it set, as, um, have it ticked to legacy, which is like a very previous version of the healing tool. And I know many people actually also have it on, um, have a line selected too. Mm-hmm. But I was told by like my professional husband that legacy is what you want to have ticked. Got it. And I tried both and I've keep coming back to legacy because I just like the way it flows and I can move on quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, now the spot healing tool. So when you see a portrait like this, I think what I will do is the cleaning guide again so that we just have a sense of what, what would we clean? Mm -hmm. Um, so for the cleaning guide, I'll just quickly change the color. And just quickly mark out a bunch of things. So for example, anything that is sort of like a blemish and not like part of her, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like, unless she specifically wanted it gone. Mm -hmm. So that would be like, you know, scraps, maybe like some scars, like a few of these things over here. Um, Birthmarks, yes or no, entirely up to you and on your subject. Mm. Freckles, I like to leave them because I think they're really cute, but sometimes the subjects might want them gone. Spots, definitely yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like tiny bits of area on the face where the light is just catching a little bit. So, and it just sort of like throws the balance off. But again, mm. it depends on what is this image for? Is this image for like editorial? Is it for fashion? Because they need, may, you know, they have a particular way. Mm-hmm. Is it a portrait? Because then you're not cleaning, you're not over retouching the subject mm-hmm. to a place where they don't even look like themselves because it's more yeah. about the subject. Yeah. Um, is it for a headshot? Like all of these things have different <clears throat> levels of attention that you would place on skin. Mm-hmm. 
So in my case, I try and just like get the skin to a place where it just honors the subject. So if yes. they have stretch marks, I leave it there. Yes, I love um, that. I do the same thing as well. <clears throat> I think it's really important to um, not, I'm not creating a new person. I'm not creating something that doesn't already exist. You know, it's just kind of, like you said, it's just honoring the subject and making sure that they are, their true self is really coming out in the image. And so I absolutely love that you said that. Yeah, because I think it's really important to also not give your subject a complex. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Like, imagine if you like clean them up so nicely and you're like, oh, but they look great. But that's your perception of great and it might not be their perception yep. of great. Exactly. Unless they want it, in which case that could just be like mm-hmm. a conversation. And I've done that before. Early in my career, I remember when I started getting into retouching, I took photos of one of my friends. And while I was retouching, she has this like scar in her forehead Hmm. that I took out. And then I sent her the image and she was like, where's my scar? (laughs) And so I think it's important to be able to make sure that you're not doing what you think is best. It's again, you're honoring your subject. Yeah. Um, and so that was important for her. She's like, it doesn't even look look like me without my scar. I'm like, oh, okay. That's that was a lesson for me to be able to remind myself. It is my subject that I want to make sure that um, is being seen, and that she feels like she's being seen as her truest self as well. I love that. Um, okay, so here we go. We this is sort of what I'll probably be cleaning. So all of these things. Mm-hmm. And I just thought I'd make this little guide just because it's really good to know there, like that. Mm-hmm. And maybe some on the lips as well. So I'll turn that off and let's get started. So with the spot healing tool, you kind of always want to have the brush size to be the size that the blemish is. So for example, I'm just going to just put this in the middle somewhere. Again, you don't want to zoom in too much, but maybe like here. So say the blemish is this one. I'm sourcing manually the area that I want to cover. So I'm going to cover from. So I'm just going to click here and brush. Now I've set my flow low. Now, yesterday we talked about the difference between opacity and flow. So if you want to learn about that, then go check out yesterday's video. Yep, go to the replay. Low flow yeah. gang. <laughs> yeah, during the low flow gang. Oh, sorry, I'm on the. Uh, I thought I was clean stamp. I thought I was healing, but I'm actually clean stamp. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, whenever I clean stamp, it's literally low flow, like often, because you can already see that it just makes it very like this transition is just seamless. Yeah. Um, you still keep, and when you are stamping on skin, especially with a low flow, even if you go down to like 4% or 5%, that's how you can retain that texture. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people wonder, how do you like clean, but not retain, but still retain the texture. And I would say clone stamp, but really low flow, because then what that does is, is that the blemish is still there. It's just been minimized. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine, because that's what helps it look like real skin. Mm -hmm. Like if you start getting rid of everything completely, you might have like a blotchy mess and lose the texture. Yeah. Um, which has happened to me many, many times. No, same. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like, it's a normal thing. Um, but when you're brushing, always keep sh- selecting very like quickly. Don't just like hold it down. Like as you can see, I select brush, select brush. Like I'm constantly mm-hmm. sourcing and brushing. It's a very like quick process here. And if I turn this off and on, it might look like we didn't do anything, but we did a lot. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I would have worked on this bit more, but yeah, see? And if you go too far, you just open up a layer mask and you- uh, Take it off, yep. Take it off. And then you can open up a new layer, new layer and work on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the layers are literally blank layers, you're not duplicating the layers, your file size stays very small. You don't, you're not making it big unnecessarily. Yeah. Yeah. So now with the um, healing tool, the spot healing tool in particular, the spot healing tool, the program is selecting the source. Mm -hmm. So again, you would change the brush to like suit. Um, so the program is pretty much like saying, okay, this is what I want. But as you can see here, so if I zoom in here, oh, hang on. 
this is the trick I wanted to show you. Okay, so let's find a really good place to, to practice this. Maybe up here, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna open up a new layer and we're gonna call this healing and we're gonna call it lighten. And we're gonna open up another one and gonna call that healing and darken. Mm. Now, this is really, really fun. Now, when you're using this, no, really. Do you know this, by the way? <laughs> no, I don't. Idara? I feel like I might be learning something new right here. <laughs> I learned this recently and I've been using <laughs> it. Yes. So I've been practicing with it a little bit. And I still think that it's something I'm going to I need to personally also get my head around. Mm -hmm. But like, I loved it enough to share, to like oh. want to share it. Oh my, yeah. I, listen, I am sitting up. I'm ready to hear this. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> If you're in the, if you're watching this video and you know this as well, please like go ahead and comment and let us yes, know. Yes, you know. let us know that you know this. And if I don't you don't know, know yeah. Now you know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> the spot healing tool that we're working on right now, the layer mode is set to normal. Mm -hmm. So normal is pretty much just telling Photoshop. Oh, hang on. Normal is pretty much just like Photoshop deciding roughly what it wants to do and if you like heal you can see like for example if I do this you can see that there's um everything is being affected mm -hmm. like the like the light part of the image and the dark part of the image mm -hmm. is all being affected together mm -hmm. but if you want to have a little bit more control with your healing tool then you want to use a different blend mode to that layer mm. so I'm going to go back and just go back so that there's nothing on there and now the only thing we're going to change is the blend mode mm. so this is the blend mode over here there's two blend modes there's the blend mode at the top which is connected to the tool so this is a tool blend mode lighten and darken which is the main two that we're going to be using mm -hmm. there's also the layer blend mode so if you wanted to leave the tool to normal you could have more control by you so you can also have control by changing the layer blend mode mm -hmm. to either lighter color okay um we're gonna change the tool blend mode so then we i feel like it just gives us a little bit more control and then we can figure this out we'll come to what we can do with the layer afterwards so the tool right now is set to normal we're gonna go ahead and put it on to lighten so now when I brush, a sample all layers is selected mm -hmm. and I'm on this healing tool, uh, healing layer. Blend mode is normal, opacity is 100. Great, I've just labeled it so we are clear. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just brush the blemish. Now what happens is with this tool is that the, if I, I just brushed a dark blemish, mm -hmm. it will, make that blemish disappear but it will leave behind the lighter parts of what i'd brushed over it won't affect the whole thing it will only affect the darker pixels mm. because it's set to lighten blend mode if i brush the lighter part of that image nothing will change mm -hmm. because it will it, uh, it leaves the lighter pixels alone mm -hmm. it only affects the darker pixels on the lighten blend mode mm -hmm. If I move over here to the darken layer and I change this to darken and now I brush on the lighter parts, they will disappear. Mm. <clears throat> so now you've got more control and it leaves behind the texture and it leaves behind like a more realistic feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you learn this? <laughs> <laughs> I learned it on YouTube. <laughs> Because wow. I'm going to be real with you here. I learned it on YouTube because I love to just watch loads of YouTube videos. And yeah. it was like one of the ones that came up in my like, I don't know, autoplay. Mm -hmm. And like, I always have something playing on the side and it came up on my autoplay. So I turned and then I was like, oh, ho, 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 ho. No, that's a big tip because like you said, like it leaves it realistic. It doesn't make it look like make it stand out and now blends really cleanly with the skin. It is wild because I haven't 
figure it out I hadn't prior Mm -hmm. figured out what to do with wrinkles because usually Mm -hmm. what I would do is like I would like clone stamp the wrinkles and then like bring down the opacity and honestly that's fine too like really it's photoshop there's like 500 ways of doing something Mm -hmm. um but then I started doing this and it just makes it so natural yeah, like the it's just so nice because the wrinkle is still there, mm-hmm. but the lighter parts of the like the lighter like not all the pixels have been affected. Yeah, only either the light ones or the or dark the dark ones. ones. Yeah. So if you had this like if you had a wrinkle, for example, like the wrinkle on her forehead right here, that's darker. You would go on lighter, and then yeah. go over that, and it will just get rid of the darker pixels, leaving yeah. the lighter pixels there, and helping it blend in seamlessly with the skin. Correct. Wow, mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> like, like over here. So this line over here, I'm on the lighten blend mode for the tool. Mm-hmm. It's going to do nothing, mm-hmm. literally nothing. But then I'm going to go into the darkened one and change that. And it should, it should wow. go. See? There. But you see these other light ones, like these other ones along over here, they've not been affected. No. Well, not that well. much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they shouldn't have been affected. Maybe. <laughs> the theory we're still working out, but. <laughs> oh my God. But anyway, that's I didn't how. See that. I didn't see that. Oh, thing. wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Of course, they would have been affected. The whole point is that they're light. Duh. Okay. See, we're yeah, on so the dark and yeah. blend mode. It, it so works the opposite. Light... Okay. So yeah, you're right. You're right. The dark and blend mode works on the lighter pixels. But if, it's like, say these lighter pixels over here, if I'm on the light and blend mode, it then should not nothing, work Then nothing on will that. happen. Nothing no, because the lighted pixels work on the darker. There you mode. go. Yes, The you're darker right. pixels, like that. See, like, on that one, it'll go. There, on that one, it should go. <laughs> <laughs> on that one, it should go. <laughs> and it makes such, like, honestly, it like... It makes sense. It makes sense. It, it, it I- makes sense to me when I'm, like, working quickly. And now that I'm trying to explain it, I'm like, hang on a minute. I need to, like, probably practice this. But it makes sense if you have a lighter, like, okay. So if you had, for example, the lighter hair, you would go on the darker blend mode yeah. to blend it out. And it'll, okay, that makes sense. I think. That well, makes- here, we've got a really big patch of, I'm not, I think this is just water. Um, so here we are. So now that we're there, we've got light pixels that we want to get rid of mm-hmm. and we don't want to really affect the dark pixels. So you want to be on the darken blend mode. Mm-hmm. So you change that to, to darken. darken and then, so it's just, it's just the opposite. You know what? This is actually really, a really, really amazing tip because whenever I would do um, my editing and I would have to focus on hair, I find it to be so dreadful because like you start cloning, if, like I would use like the clone stamp tool and you're cloning from certain areas and it's just like not looking realistic. You can see that it's just like not clean at all. Um, yeah. And you can see that you've literally cloned from somewhere else. So I would struggle with that. Whereas this, it's just like darkening those lighter pieces so and it just and it leaves the lighter pieces alone yes. so that you're not affecting the whole lot. yeah yep so it's like more specific and easier to have a more natural aesthetic yeah yeah it's just more specific i i just i i think that's the bit i was attracted to mm-hmm. like it's just um you have more control because you're yeah. telling photoshop what you want to look it yeah. to look up yeah, oh, I love that. I love that tip because even watching you, like hair for me is a struggle, and this is a quick and easy way. Oh my gosh, it's literally like nearly. <laughs> <laughs> like the fact that you just clean all of that up, it doesn't look manipulated. It doesn't look no. like it. Literally looks like that's just how it was. And the best thing is, I'm using the Content Aware tool, which is also pretty, really powerful. Mm. So it means that I'm actually like having a lot of fun. There's no, there's not a lot of work for me on this mm-hmm. side. Like the only work I'm actually doing is just moving my pen around. Mm-hmm. Photoshop is doing everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, once I learned that, you can see why I was excited, right? Yeah. It no. even works on this little hairband because the hairband's light. So that we're on so wild, like it's yeah. seamless. So you just want to remember that it's the opposite. So if you yeah. want to get rid of something light, then make sure that your tool mode is on darken. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get rid of something dark, then make sure that your tool mode is it's on, on light. Yeah, it's just 
the opposite, then you're good. Yeah. And I'm they're right gonna, next to each other. Yeah. After this uh, live, I will definitely be going into some old photos and just playing around with this tool because. Yeah, it's worth yeah, it. A hundred percent. It's absolutely work it, worth it. Yeah. Um, there is a question. Somebody asked, hi, Bella, do you use the Topaz sharpening AI? I do not. No, I don't use that. Um, I just felt like it wasn't, it was just one step too much for me. And I just mm -hmm. like to have everything in, uh, I've, I've just found a workflow that I like. So mm -hmm. I do sharpening in two ways and we'll come to that. For, we'll that, get to that point. We'll get to that. Yeah. When it's time. Perfect. Perfect. And somebody else said that this is a life-saving tip. <laughs> Going to use this for every image. <laughs> yeah, it works really, really great. So I would 100% recommend that if even if you're not sold on it, test it out. Oh, and I'm then, sold. Yeah, <laughs> just, just test it out and then yeah. uh, then decide if you want to do it or not. Like the, that's the whole point of this, isn't it? So that we can share tips, yeah. share information. And uh, who knows, even if you take one thing away with you from this whole live, yeah. I feel like job well done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much, so here we go. That's the hair, like more or less done. And we that's see a took... before and after of that too. Oh, are we ready? I think I'm Okay. Oh. Wow. Wow. And it looks natural. It looks so natural. Nothing, like see the lighter parts of the hair where the highlights are hitting really pretty? Wow. They were not touched. Yeah. See the highlights up here? Yeah, and, they, weren't, and, they were not touched at all. And I didn't have to concentrate like, oh, oh, I had this source wrong. Mm -hmm. So I have to like just go, like, you know, control Z and mm -hmm. then do it again. Mm -hmm. um, no, I like, wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> You literally were just duh, 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 like making yeah. your way quickly. <laughs> yeah, because you told the program what you wanted to look out for, and so and it did the it, work for it you. did it. So yeah, thank you. Guys. Oh, this is this, come like on. it's super fun. Come on, Photoshop. Come on, Adobe. Like <laughs> yeah, I love like, that. I love that. It's very very natural looking, and I think that's what yeah. I love the most. Because again, like I said before, I would have that problem of I'm sourcing incorrectly and trying to make it all blend. Um, yeah, and it would look so unnatural, look like I manipulated. Where, whereas this is just so seamless, so clean. So I love this. Thank you. So basically, oh, hang on, I was on the wrong one. Um, even like these little ones here. See, like I can just quickly do those as well if I wanted to, and it would just, yeah. Yeah, this is beautiful. Look natural. Okay, so while we're on the topic of hair, um. Honestly, I'm like, I actually surprised myself by how good that turned out. <laughs> Can I confess? <laughs> okay, so while we're on the topic of hair, one of the questions that I get at my workshops is like, when you have this sort of like, um, lovely, fluffy, yeah, poofy, like the frizzy hair, the frizziness yeah. that happens, like, how do you get rid of it? Um, it's not too difficult. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of other ways to do it. So if you happen to know an alternative way, feel free to share it in yes. the chat. Let us know. Um, let us know. Please let us know. Because this is like, I want, I think what makes this whole experience really fun for me is connecting with our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. So make sure y'all okay. drop your questions in the chat. And again, if you are on YouTube and you want to ask Bella some questions and you're just mind blown like I have been, <laughs> come over to behandsv.net slash Adobe Live so you can ask those questions. Yeah. Okay, so now we're, we're working on the frizziness in her hair. Yes, so this is pretty much just me using the clone stamp tool. I'm on a new layer, so I'm going to go ahead and label that hair frizz so it's very clear what we're doing. And I'm just pretty much just sourcing from around the subject. Even if I spill onto the subject, it's okay mm -hmm. because we're going to use a layer mask anyway. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are very like, um, what do you call it? Trying really hard to get it perfect the first time. The reality is you don't, you don't need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. You can work quickly and just uh, figure it out as you go. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Like, I think that's most of it there done. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to just a bit, give myself a bit more extra, it's just important to me that the sky still looks very natural. Mm -hmm. Then I would just go ahead and open up a layer mask. 
and brush it out now with the brush right now it's such a hard so yeah. maybe like not totally soft but not totally hard either maybe like here okay. just lightly brush so right now it's such a 100 percent might change to nine percent as we get closer and just leave a little bit because if it's all gone that's when you have that cut out effect yeah and it looks really like don't look don't look good mm -hmm. you still want to keep a little bit of that natural frizz so it looks again natural yeah so that's pretty much what i would do for her hair and then obviously i got a bit too happy here so i'll just you know, <laughs> bring some of that back but like it should this whole process should not take that long and again, my brush flow setting is set to like 9% flow, 100% opacity. Mm -hmm. And my brushes are just like small, quick brushes. And I just hold it down to build up mm -hmm. the brush. I don't need to, it's not like opacity where I have to keep lifting my brush on and off. Yeah. Yeah. So this just feels so much better. Okay. So this is one way of sorting out a hair it's very like rudimental but it gets the job done mm -hmm. i'm going to show you a, another way of doing this so say there see if i zoom out now and we there see yeah so now that took what probably one, one minute one I minute i don't think we're up to two <laughs> right so that's like one minute hair there you see mm -hmm. yeah so that's like a really quick solution so if you're working on something that's perfect like that for social media is absolutely fine mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like perfect you still have a little bit of frizz at the top that's what you want to show yeah. and uh you didn't like break yourself going in <laughs> and like individually, individually healing. trying to heal each strand yeah. and make sure it was all yeah yeah because that's also something that i used to do <laughs> no i i'm saying i'm agreeing because i'm like i've done this all like all the wrong well not wrong because it's preference but if you want to be efficient these tips are really good yeah because basically what i was doing when i was prepping for this was i was just really writing down a list and thinking about all the things I used to do that I wish I'd known before. Yeah. Yeah. So this was one of those tips. So I used to literally go in and like use a heel tool and then try and do the clone stamping tool. Mm -hmm. No, this is fine. This is good enough. Yeah, this um, works. Yeah, this works. It's quick. You can just get, like see if we wanted to fluff up that cloud a bit more. We just select from here, lightly brush. And this is where that low flow really mm. came in. Like I said, it changes the game. game it does yeah so there you go that was one way so another way of fixing hair frizz so say we um say for example and this is just for like example purposes mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, oops where are we um here and we just use a brush to and brush back so say, for example, we had cut our subject out. Now, when you cut your subject out, you'll have like a line, most mm -hmm. likely. So I'm just creating this like this fake line. Mm -hmm. Like if you and then I just like stamp this very quickly. Oh. There we go. Just stamp this. So we have that really like clean line, like mm -hmm. as you would if you like. You know, you use a pen try, tool. Yeah, and try to crop her out. Yeah. Okay. So if we had like a clean line, we would say something like, like that there. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, it looks really like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that don't look good. Okay. I would make a brush that I would use to create the fuzz. Mm. Yeah. So to do that, you want to make sure that, so let's go into a new layer and we just call this like thick fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm making it up as I go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so we want to go over here to the brush. And when that's selected, you just want to go to brush settings. And brush settings is really fun because this is where you can make your stuff. Mm. So right now, this is what my brush looks like. It's a very like um, um, straight line, which is what you want. <laughs> <laughs> like it's very like uniform. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. So you want to go ahead and click on shape dynamics. And then if you select shape dynamics, you can change the control, which is what I already have it. So often it's just this, this mm -hmm. is what you would have. So I have it set to fade. Mm. And now you can control the fade of that brush. How does mm -hmm. it fade away? So I've set it to 200, you can set it to 500, you can set it to 20. Mm -hmm. And you can get a sense of like what that distances as we can yeah. see so maybe for this one we want to set it to like 50 for example or maybe mm -hmm. we can set it to 100 yeah let's let's try yeah. 100 and we can tweak it as we go um you can change so the size jitter is what you really don't want right now you're making hair and hair mm -hmm. doesn't have like this bubbles in it so mm -hmm. bring that right down to zero this is the bit that sort of like lengthens your hair. As you can see, you can start to see a little bit of it coming through at the end there. Mm -hmm. um, angle, jitter doesn't do much. And I'm going to leave the roundness off as well. So right now, I think I might bring this down a bit. Like maybe here and bring this down to like 50. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. Let's just see how this works because I know that when I, for different hair, it, you have to like figure it out depending mm -hmm. on the style of the hair. All right, so right now this is what my brush looks like. And if I reduce the size of my brush, you can see that, um. yeah. So that's not going to work right now. I think that works out better. Yeah. So you can start seeing the hair. So this is how you'd make hair. Oh. Yeah. Um. I am going to go ahead and maybe reduce this so it's more like that. Mm -hmm. Reduce that a little bit more. Okay. Okay. I think that's good enough for me. Yeah. I think that's good too. This is, I'm so, no, keep going. I'm so intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'm making... so, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I'm happy to hear that. Oh okay. So, so we've made some hair. And mm -hmm. we've just, and all I've done was just quickly move these around, change the size of my brush to just mm -hmm. sort of like get to this, a sort of place that feels like it would lit, work with the subject mm -hmm. of their image. And again, it would, this, the, um, the settings for this would change depending on your picture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's just like uh, delete that layer again and do a new one now. Let's rename that. Fake fuzz. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so now that I've got my fake fuzz, select, uh, fake fuzz layer on, my brush is set. We're going to go in and just zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to select a color from her actual hair. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm selecting the color, I'm going to pull up the select, um, the eyedropper tool and show you that I have the sample set to current and below. Mm -hmm. Because I'm working on a blank layer. You don't, if you have it set to all layers, again, it sources from anything above it. Um, if you have it on current layer. It's not it, sourcing anything. Not sourcing anything. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So current and below it is. Sample size could be point sample, three by three or five by five. Actually, I like to just go by five by five. And what that does is it pretty much just like picks the average of the colors mm. in that general area. So it just, I feel like it just picks a more natural tone. You're not like, I don't know, unless you're looking for something very specific, but for mm -hmm. what we need, the average is actually fine. Good. Yeah, it's good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. So I usually just leave it five by five average. And now I've got my brush selected and now I'm gonna do a quick ooh, 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 brush. So this is where I would rotate accordingly so if i was doing this by myself i would rotate the canvas because your hand mm -hmm. um sometimes it's like weird doing that right yeah going in that direction so you yeah. want to make sure it's comfortable for you to... so why yeah why why go out of your way to be uncomfortable when you just rotate? Ex exactly nope <laughs> it's where that laziness comes in <laughs> we're not adding extra 
This is so phenomenal. But you see, so I'm literally just sourcing from near her hair, from her actual hair color. Bella says, pause. <laughs> pause, girl. This is a lot. What? <laughs> Huh? So you mean this whole time I could have been making hair? Like, <laughs> is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you, it's not so bad. You can do it. It's it's easy, actually. No, it's, it's easy, <laughs> and it's fun. I this is this is the thing. I think if you can make Photoshop fun for you, then you're winning. Because I really struggle to, like I told you yesterday, right? Like I have really, mm. um, in like really bad ADHD where mm -hmm. I just struggle to stay focused mm -hmm. and I really struggle to like stay in one place long I'm I always like to I'm always zipping around mm -hmm. so manage to find ways to just make the workflow really efficient so that when I am working on a picture I can like bash it out yeah and uh and while I'm working on it it doesn't feel so painful yeah oh of course <laughs> yeah but so this is super fun. Like I can literally like have an anime on and do this. <laughs> <laughs> reading oh subtitles, or, like reading subtitles <laughs> and like just brushing some hair. No, that 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 multitasking is on a different level. <laughs> it's on a different level. Yeah. Wow. And then you just move the you just move this uh move your canvas around to like suit. So if, like if I'm brushing on this side now. Like that, there. See? So somebody somebody said, now I know how to get my hair back. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all well, know. Now you know. Yay. Okay. So, okay. So this might not be the most perfect job because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, we're working, teaching. I threw this together super fast. But pretty much take your time here. It's okay if it's not perfect. You can go back into your layers and figure it out. Um. Another thing that I would recommend is at the bottom here, and you can't really see it, but I can see it. You see all these bits, like the stubs, mm -hmm. like the beginnings of it. I don't like that to show. Yeah. So I would just open up a layer mask and with my brush, like f make it really fluffy, change, turn off shape dynamics so that and, and that's not it. Mm -hmm. It's not here. Uh, change the flow, <clears throat> bring it down. And just lightly brush with black to just clean up that bit yeah uh, so that they go you can see them start disappearing a little bit now see it just blends it in mm -hmm. yeah so there's there see like over here there just blend yeah, it blends in, everything in simply. yeah so that's that low flow that just helps you blend everything so nicely and again how long did this take literally I don't know, like five minutes, minutes, like yeah. a few minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like I love that you can just make it. Cause I'm thinking about like, not only is it good for hair, it's also good for like, I would imagine it also working for like eyebrows. If you wanted to kind of yes. fill in someone's eyebrows. Cause I've tried that in the past and not knowing how to make it look like natural hairs, but girl, like, now yeah. I know. Now I know. It's, exactly. So it's like um, eyebrows, um, tail. <laughs> it's like tails <laughs> if you're shooting horses. <laughs> pets. Like if you have, if you're shooting pets and there's like, you know, some patches missing mm -hmm. and the owner is like, oh, please, make, you know, Teddy look great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm brush the hair. Wow. I'm sure yeah. if I was, you know, shooting a male and they wanted me to connect their beard, maybe I could do that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> no, true. <laughs> fix their sideburns. Yes, yeah. fix sideburns, because that's another thing. Yeah, definitely eyelashes. <gasps> because it's natural. And it, the you saw the way, like over here, how it comes off at the end. It's perfect for eyelash. Wow. Oh, just starch a little bit earlier. Yeah, and then... Flip it through and then just brush it away. Wow. Yeah. Don't start mm -mm. on the eyelash. Start mm -mm. before, like in the middle of the eye. This is dangerous. <laughs> this is dangerous. Okay, Dara, I'm going to see your pictures now. I'm going to be like, she knows. She, does, she, yep, she knows. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to zoom out so we can see. <clears throat> so 
So we've had none. Mm. But you always want some fuzz. Yeah. You do. And also, you can always duplicate it. So that layer. Oh, if it's so it, like, like, it piles on top of each other. Yeah, like if, yeah. say, for example, oh, this is too light. It still doesn't look quite great. You can just, you know, duplicate the layer, mm. change the opacity of that layer to, you know, whatever you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it looks good enough. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Somebody said, um, I saw this done for sweater fuzz to make it look natural. Sweater fuzz is super hard to select too. That's a good mm. point. Yeah. Oh. I've not done it for sweaters. Mm-mm. Yeah, but then I don't really shoot a lot of sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a really good point. Oh, so just said we're gonna see we're gonna see some hairy pictures from now on. You might <laughs> You might, I might be trans, I might be giving people haircuts. I might be. Oh my God, we <laughs> I should start a series. Connecting should... beards that don't connect. I might be giving, I don't have eyelashes. So you might be seeing me with eyelashes. Listen. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we should do a series. Like yeah. what's real and what's not. What's real and what's not. Tell me, yeah. tell me it's not real. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> that would be super fun. Telling people to it like is. guess if it's real or not. Uh, like Frank just said, my, Frank, my guy, like, yes, your beard must connect by force. <laughs> by force, the beard must connect. <laughs> <laughs> I love that tip. Thank you so much, Bella, for that. That was phenomenal. Oh, you're welcome. I, I had fun. That was um, something I really wanted to share because it really helped me. Yeah. So I'm really glad if it can help somebody else. Oh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the brush settings. Now, um, sorry. Let's jump back to the image we were working on because I think it'd be super cool to finish that picture that we started. And mm. as we go, basically what I will... Oh, <laughs> basically what I... <laughs> I actually have a few images ready for us to talk about in case Mm -hmm. we get to a particular subject and I want to address it. So that's what that was. (laughs) For anybody wondering. (laughs) So I'm going to go ahead and carry on with showing you where this image is going. Because as we go, we're going to like cover more things and Mm -hmm. then we can pop back between the images. So after cleaning, I started to like fill in all the gaps um, in this, uh, uh, in the, in the corners. Mm -hmm. So for example, over here, this particular picture is literally just from another um, photo. All I did was just cut it out from another photo and throw Mm -hmm. it in. Now, usually what you would do is you would um, connect this uh, with a layer mask. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what you can also do is because you're just throwing that that in and it's just like a small piece of a picture, I would actually just probably just like use that layer and then just connect it myself without a layer mask to blend Mm -hmm. it in more. Mm -hmm. So I'll just like use a clone stamp tool sourced from the actual layer itself and just get it really nicely blended in. So as you can see like that. Mm There's two, you can see there's a um, uh, same, um, like a, a same pattern. So that's usually like a giveaway for when mm-hmm. something's been clone stamped. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover that from another part of the image. If I wanted to do that properly, then I would just do a new layer, select, go over it like that, and then do transform, move this around maybe make it a bit bigger so it doesn't look so like i borrowed Mm -hmm. it from somewhere else try and still keep it so that the light doesn't look too unreal Mm, yeah um but yeah it sort of looks good enough and it will do and then you can just sort of work on top of it again you can drop the opacity of your stamp tool and then just lightly brush so you can get some texture there as well Mm mm-hmm so that's pretty much what I would do. Very, very like quick work. And I wouldn't spend too much time again here because I know that I'm going to add a bunch of stuff on top of this. Yeah. And the cleaning process, you know, if you, especially if you're working with nature elements, I think there's like a forgiveness thing there as well. Mm-hmm. Don't like bust your butt trying really, really hard to get it to perfect. Yeah. 
um because that's also a thing something that will help you uh, make you not want to edit <laughs> yeah no of course it takes away from the pleasure of the editing i do like that you um because I, I didn't know if you were just going to clone all of this out. So I like that you just kind of made a simple, took an image, took a portion of another image and just pieced everything together. It saves you so much time and it's, it's being efficient for sure. Yeah. So then this is what I was going to talk about earlier. And I said I forgot how to do it. But I just mm, did you just remember? <laughs> to, to, to be honest, I, I did. I did know it was there. I just couldn't. Um. I just couldn't see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I couldn't see it is because um, right now nothing is selected on the picture. There's, It's literally like clean. Mm -hmm. So the option is uh, is Not blanked there. out. So, so we, were, we were looking at it. So yeah, we were, we were looking, looking at it. At it. <laughs> Didn't notice it. You know, it's okay. <sighs> Honestly, what a moment. <laughs> what a moment. So on a new layer, um, it's just a blank layer. I'm going to use my marquee tool and say, select something like this. I'm going to go over here to edit and go to the now available content aware, fill. content aware fill, because you've told Photoshop that this is the area that I want to fill. Mm -hmm. So now it knows you've asked it and now it's showing you a preview mm -hmm. of where it's going to source from. So everything in green, is where it's going to source it from. Mm -hmm. And then here is a preview where it's going to show you what that looks like. Looks like, yeah. Yeah. If you like it, you can just go ahead and say, okay. And it will more or less do the job for you. Exactly. And it looks really good. So now what about if you're doing something like over here? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open this up, another layer. And this time I'm going to do the same thing. Select that. Like, okay, dear Photoshop, please fill this. And go to constant aware fill. <laughs> dear Photoshop, please do the things. Please, please do the things. Please <laughs> so do that the I things. don't have to. Yes. So we don't have to be stressed. Do it for us. Okay. Um, so the preview actually looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So you can see over here. Um, I don't know if there's a way for me to make this bigger. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, here there we, we are. Go. Yeah. Okay, so the preview, as you can see, Actually, it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but for example, if it didn't look good, then what we would do is have a look at what Photoshop is sourcing from to fill that space. So mm -hmm. right now it is sourcing from these rocks, um, this plant. I don't really want those two things sourced. Mm -hmm. So the brush is automatically set to delete. So all you need to do is just brush out, mm -hmm. which you don't want Photoshop to source from. So I don't want it to source from any of this. I just want it to source from the sand. Yeah. So I'll take that out. I'll take this rock out as well. And then it's re kind of analyzing that area. Yeah, it will just re... Mm. Yeah, I don't know if it'll do it with this picture because I'm pretty sure I didn't source from it. But yeah. I just wanted to share that in case you or somebody who's watching is using this tool and they're like, this looks weird. Yeah. That's what you would do. You would control where it sources from and it should do the trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then you hit OK, and it's Damn. pretty much done. Yeah. Again, you can now see, like, it because I had that whole uh, square selected, I didn't need the whole square, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a layer mask, make it black, um, and then brush back using the white brush mm -hmm. tool, what I want. So again, with my flow set to 9%, it's like my magic number. I really just <laughs> clearly love 9%. I'm just going like, to blend it in. Right in. Yeah, just, yeah, blends just right blend in. it in. Making a note that, okay, I'm going to come here and fix those because mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they are and they don't really look that great. <laughs> so just gently, gently brushing. And you can see it's like blended in quite nicely. Mm -hmm. And that's how we fix it in like... A very quick step and then again to fix those just use my stamp tool maybe source from down here it's a bit lighter but that's okay mm -hmm. slightly brush 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 yeah see there you go that does not look too bad at all no it doesn't at all no that's fine i'll just go ahead and maybe just slightly brush here as well like that 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, so it's the same thing over here. Um, I would do the same thing. So new layer and continue. And so that's pretty much what I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just have it nice and ready. And there we go. There we go. So this is me just pretty much just prepping. <clears throat> so this image has already been prepped and done. And what I'm going to do is pretty much just go through the layers. Mm-hmm. And as we hit different things, we'll have those conversations. Um, it's not going to be perfect because now we've done a few things and everything is a bit, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me just make a new layer very quickly and tidy these up. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Just slightly brush. Oh. There we are. And this as well can go. All right. See over here how this looks a bit strange. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to source from the side and just brush it over. Yeah. But if, for example, that was skin, then what you would do <clears throat> is have a low flow, but you can drop your opacity. Mm. Yeah. So that then you can like, still retain any of like what you want underneath okay but it's muted see i like that. so it's so- not yeah so it's not like completely gone the rock still looks like a rock like a rock it- yeah <laughs> it still has the texture of a rock but it's just it's muted it's muted yeah so there's no it doesn't look weird and it doesn't look distracting mm-hmm. more importantly <clears throat> okay all right so moving on We've done all of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let's see. Okay, so we've done it, we've done our extension. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna quickly talk about dodging and burning. Mm-hmm. And before we do that, do we wanna have, do we have any questions or anything? No, I stage? think at this point, we don't <laughs> have any questions going on in the chat that I can see. I think people are still, mind blown by the you can make hair <laughs> aspect of it all um, so if y'all have any questions about what we've talked about thus far be sure to drop it in the chat again if you are on youtube come over to behandsb.net slash adobe live that way you can join the conversation um so i guess i do have a, a question you know when you're how long and Jen, I know we still have steps to go through. How long generally does it take you to edit an image? Do you find yourself, do you give yourself a time limit or is there like an average amount of time that you usually find yourself spending on each photo? Um, I don't give myself a time limit because it depends on the picture. And mm-hmm. also some pictures I like to spend a little bit extra on. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that don't do that great. And then it's the ones that you do like in two minutes and go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I don't give myself a time limit. But what I do focus on a lot is to create a efficient workflow. Mm. Yeah. So that while I'm in the process, it feels very easy and not something painful mm-hmm. um, as it can sometimes feel. Yeah. So especially if you're somebody who likes the art of taking a photo and not necessarily naturally the art of retouching Mm -hmm. because they're two very different things and sometimes and often we need to know how to process our images so that they we honor them when we share them too exactly exactly yeah like we honor our vision um so yeah I focus just on making my workflow efficient Mm -hmm. and that's why I like really earlier today just like laid out exactly what I do and that's what I do step by step I follow that um, is everything we're doing right now, we and everything we did set us up to this point mm-hmm. where we can now, you know, dodge and burn. Mm-hmm. Like we did the composition, we did the cleaning, and now we're going to be like the next step. The next step. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like, I don't know, just the whole process of um, kind of mapping out what you're going to be doing. I think that's been really consistent throughout this live is just kind of going in with some kind of game plan, which makes it less stressful, makes it easier to kind of go from beginning to end and have that flow. And like you said, it doesn't feel like too much. It feels kind of, I don't know, it just feels easier to go through that that flow. So I, I really like yeah. that because I don't do that. I don't, in my head, I might know. Um, 
And even even then, sometimes I'm just kind of like, oh, what do I want to do now? And I can jump from place to place. Hmm. But I like that you kind of focus on, okay, now I've done this. Now I've done this. Now I can move to this part. And it kind of separates everything instead of making it feel too like mumble jumbled. It's so useful to have a game plan yeah. because it means that more of than not, you won't forget anything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like you That's- cover your bases. Like your ba- like everything is mm-hmm. covered. Yeah. And then you also know like a timeline. You're like, okay. So like mm-hmm. for me, I know the composite part, like what we did takes the longest time. Yeah. Because that's a fiddling around. You're like mm-hmm. trying to see what fits where and mm-hmm. all of those things. That takes ages. Yeah. And then I know that now that I'm on the, like if I do the dodgy brain, it won't take long. Mm-hmm. And the cleaning, like I showed you, it didn't take long. Don't take long. Mm-hmm. Now that we can darken and lighten and really pick how we clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Easy. And then the color training will take a little bit of time as well. Mm-hmm. So on average, it would take me maybe like some pictures, like half an hour okay and some pictures would take like maybe three or four hours or five yeah but again it depends majority on on the composite yeah Yeah. like how how am i how many pieces am i pulling together are you a so when you're when you're doing all of this are you a play music in the background and make it kind of fun are you playing like you said like that anime are you reading (laughs) subtitles and editing like (laughs) um both so some days I just want music if I'm like really like wanting the music to fuel the art. Mm-hmm. So that's when I put music on um, to like come through here and come out here. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, what if I had this and that? Because mm-hmm. like the music is making you feel things. I was just going to ask, like, because that happens to me. So music yeah. kind of will influence the way that I'm editing an image depending on what I'm listening to. Correct. Yes. I'm so happy it's not just me. No, it's not yeah. just you, girl. It's me too. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes, like, it, I know that if it's like a big batch of images and like one is done, and all I need to do is like sort of replicate uh, the look across mm-hmm. many images. And so that, like, a lot of the thinking is not necessary. Mm-hmm. Just doing it. Yeah. Then I'll watch like the. I'll put an anime on. Or I'll put like a show on or something and treat myself. <laughs> Hashtag treat yourself. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. No, I, I definitely resonate with that. I definitely do. So I think we're okay. ready to move into dodging and burning. We have about about 12, 13 minutes before we do the artist spotlight. So we do have, and I know you really wanted to touch on. Um, the preparing for social media. So when do you want me to kind of give you a cutoff for that? Um, I think like maybe even like 10 minutes before, because I won't take long. That's like a really quick step. Okay, perfect. Then I will make sure that I make a mental reminder to be like, hey, 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on the time too. Perfect, I got you, I got you. Yeah. Awesome, so I think we're ready to keep moving forward. Okay, so For this process that I'm going to show you now, it's a very like non-destructive way of dodging and burning. Mm -hmm. And if you're somebody who's familiar with dodging and burning and the various techniques there are, then you probably know this, but I'm just going to cover it for those who are not and who might not really even know what dodging and burning is. Mm -hmm. So dodging and burning essentially is a way that you can essentially even out the tones between light Mm -hmm. and dark. So just the way the light hits on a person um, or a subject and on the image, um, we're just going to like use these tools and curves especially Mm -hmm. to just get a more cohesive light play in our photo. Um, Because sometimes you look at your work and be like, "Mm, you just can't put your finger on it. And sometimes it's the light. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not even the colors or anything. Like, it's just the way the light is hitting on particular parts of the image and it's mm-hmm. throwing you off. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to show you what I do, which is work on a more global scale. So when it comes to dodging, a lot of people use it for, obviously, uh, portraiture mm-hmm. and high-end retouching for editorials and magazines. It's like, you know, it's, it's absolutely a must-have mm-hmm. in part of your workflow. I'm not like a high-end retoucher, so I can't like show you the, you know, exactly how I would dodge and burn the skin to perfection Mm -hmm. because that's not where I'm strongest at. I will give that to a professional. Yes, I feel you on that. Yeah. 
and uh, but and that's fine. Like that's a very normal thing to do to give that part mm-hmm. of the process to a professional. It's very normal. <laughs> Because you got to be a really particular type of person to be sitting there dodging, yeah, burning and dodging. pixels. No, it's, it's, you know, it's funny because like I, when I started going into learning about skin editing, um, someone told me that that's like usually how professionals will dodge and burn. And I was like, yeah, mm, I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> I will yeah, do just you enough see? and I will leave that for the professionals. Yes. And that's okay. But the, what I'm going to show you is literally how the same things that they would use. So what I did was, and I'll start it again, is go over here to my adjustment panel, Mm -hmm. select the curves tool, and we're going to name this curve dot. I'm going to go ahead and drag this middle point up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just sort of like, we're not going to go too high like here. That's just like not necessary. Mm -hmm. But like somewhere like here, like the midpoint between the the squares is absolutely Mm -hmm. fine. We don't want that to show because we're going to pick where that adjustment mm-hmm. is showing on the picture. So we don't want it to show. So what do we do? We invert our layer mask by holding down command and I. Mm-hmm. So that layer mask has been inverted. So now we that adjustment's there. It's hidden because of our black layer mask. Mm-hmm. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer mask and call it a new layer and call it burn. So do the same thing. Drag this middle pointer down halfway between the squares mm-hmm. and we're going to name that burn. Now this has darkened the image, has brought it all the way down. So now we don't want that to show either. So we want to invert it. Correct. There we go. Those two are set. Now we're going to create a couple more layers. Mm-hmm. One layer is going to be the black and white layer. Um, there's a variety of ways to do this. Some people go into use saturation, drag the saturation down, but I just click on black and white. Um, oh, another way of doing it is if you do a color fill as well. Mm -hmm. So over here, solid color. Um, oh, hang on a minute. I had it set up here earlier and yeah. So it's here, solid color, bring that down and set this to a color blend mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was just like a solid color, pick the color black and then change the blend mode to color. Okay. Okay. So this usually is enough for some people to like get started because the point is to see the the highlights and the shadows, Mm -hmm. etc. For me, it's still not strong enough for, yeah. to, for that contrast so i'll do one more layer which is another curves layer and i'll do the same thing drag that down so that way you can really get that yeah. contrast in there. now i yeah. can see it now these two top layers the color fill black and white layer and this curves layer they're mm-hmm. just helper layers now these layers i'm not going to work on them And I'm not going to have them showing all the time either. They're just Mm -hmm. there as a guide right now so that we've taken away the distraction of color. Mm -hmm. And we are focusing purely on the light and shadow, the light and dark parts of the image. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, We're just focusing on the light. (laughs) Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on the dodge layer. And with my brush set to like 100% flow and opacity, gonna brush to show you what that looks like Mm -hmm. so that's that's that um adjustment that we'd made come through now obviously that's a lot (laughs) (laughs) that's not why you would do it so i'm just gonna uh, control z myself back in time and change the flow to one percent okay now people would be like oh my god one percent like oh by the way prior to this point um everything would have been fixed. Like we would have fixed the pin on her hair, mm-hmm. the hair across her face, et cetera. We, all of this mm-hmm. would have been fixed. We we would not be working on this image un- unless that was done yeah. at that stage. Yeah. But we're, this is, you know, we, we get things to cover today. <laughs> and I would have used the same tools that I showed you earlier, the clone healing. To be able and, to clean all of that up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now with my brush set to 1%, I am lightly going to just smooth out sort of the shadows and light part of the image. So I'm just going to like 
bring some light up to like her upper lip because I like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to enhance that. Mm-hmm. Maybe enhance the tip of her nose. Mm-hmm. I like to use this to enhance makeup. So like Same. the inner corners of the eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, if her eyes were open, it's really nice mm-hmm. to brush the pupils to make yep. them stand out a bit more. I think here I'm just going to brush it across as if it was a highlighter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to brush it across the headpiece to make it stand out a bit more because that's always really fun. And maybe also across the choker as well. So I'm not brushing very like long strokes. The strokes I'm making are pretty much, if I show you, short and quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what they look like. They're just really short and quick. Any part of the image that might be a bit too dark is going to just get lightened up a tiny mm-hmm. bit like here. Maybe bring some down here. If it's if you've gone too far, like I think I did here, mm-hmm. switch it up. So go back to the black brush and brush that adjustment that you made away. And so the burn, if I come back here, I'm just going to lightly, oh, with it on white, show it under her chin to define her chin mm-hmm. a little bit more come down here i like to also go into dodge and bring it across the hair because that's always fun as well especially if you've got like curls do it at the end of the curl Mm. see like over here like that yeah just here and then jump dive between the two so burn and like the burning is really good for eyeshadow as well Mm mm-hmm especially the corners of the eye to like really enhance your makeup artist's makeup again over here i might burn her lips a little bit just on the inner side but that's just because i like that way the way that looks Mm -hmm. it's not it's only a personal preference at the end of the day as we learn and so that's what i would pretty much do this is just me working on a very big very global scale very gently Mm -hmm. um I'm not going to spend too much time unless it's like absolutely like necessary. And if it's necessary, then at this point, I probably wouldn't even do this. I would send it to a pro Mm -hmm. and tell them exactly what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But for social media and stuff like that, and especially just maybe to get your vision to where you want it to be, I think for many people, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good enough. I want to just show you that it's, not something to be scared of Mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people including myself I didn't dodge and burn for ages because I was like oh it's (laughs) not for people like me (laughs) (laughs) you know like I can't do that it sounds too tricky Mm -hmm. it's not it's It's really not not. it's It's not not. Mm -mm. and like you said you can really it's really just also enhancing where the night the light naturally falls as well so you're not really creating anything new you're just kind of making sure that you're, you can pull out or retract exact areas a, certain, a bit more so exactly. I, I enjoy dodging and burning I do it a lot on um, my portraits um, just to really kind of again wherever the light falls on the face or in the body I just want to bring it out a little bit more or maybe there's some shadows I want to be able to pull back and it helps to give your, your image so much more dimension as well yeah so see over here, if I move this contrast down a bit, we can see over here. Mm-hmm. We can see over here, right there, there's two spots, like one mm-hmm. here and okay, one I here. So you can just go into the, the dodge tool, change the size of your brush and lightly brush over them. And that's what you would pretty much do. See? And yeah, now they're gone. Now they're gone. Oh, yeah. Well, they should be gone. (laughs) Yeah, see, like over here, just lightly brush with that dodge tool and it should go. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. You won't know until you do this. There. See there. Yeah. See those two spots? They're Mm -hmm. gone. They're gone. Yeah. So these are our guidance layers. So you can turn them on and off. And there's some more up here. So dodging and burning only works for light. It doesn't really work for Mm -hmm. texture. Mm -hmm. Texture is what you would use the clone stamp and healing tool to fix. 
um, you wouldn't use clone and healing to fix the light. Yes. Because that's what you would do at this stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so see there's like a light part over here. So you just want to go into your burn tool and then just brush at it till it goes away. Just go slowly, slowly, gently. And then you can turn, oh, you can turn that on and off and you can and see you can it's see, gone. You can see it's gone, yeah. Yeah, or at least affected enough to replace. Uh, if you've gone too far, like I think I might have, just change your brush and lightly brush it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I love that. It's just it's very, a very easy way to, I like yeah. that you have the black and white layers because it really helps to just focus on a C and you kind of remove the distraction of color. So I think that's a really great way to just really focus on the yeah. areas that you want to focus on. So this blemish over here, this one, it would be too much for me to do with a mm -hmm. burn tool, a dodge tool. So probably for that, I will just go ahead and have a new layer and just... Spot heal that one or clone it. Yeah, clone it. Perfect. But maybe check all the settings are right. Change that to like 3% flow so it's really light. Just Let's lightly that brush. Up. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Lightly brush it away. You so can I... also... Yeah, go on. Oh, no, no. Put it, you can finish. Yeah, you were saying something though. There. Oh, okay. Perfect, perfect. So you were just able to clone stamp that out and it's clean, natural, it's not too much. No, you can also probably do content aware on that too if you wanted to really smash mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Like you said, there's but, so many ways to do something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many ways to get your result. Beautiful. Yeah. So we are at 11 o'clock and as you all can see, our artist spotlight countdown has made its way down to zero. So every um, Adobe Live on our second day, we always like to spotlight a specific artist. Um, and so if you have somebody that you would like to recommend for the next artist spotlight, you can do so. Um, but I think this is a good point in our live to go ahead and highlight our um, spotlight for the day. So. Whenever you're ready, Bella, I think we can pull up that person's pro profile. Okay, so the person that we are going to be profiling today is our subject. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is Brandy Nicole. We were actually together on a trip to Namibia. And she is a photographer that I really, really admire. And capturing her portrait was like, really like a moment for me. Mm -hmm. I was really, really happy about it. Um, that she allowed me to do that and it was just so much fun. So this is her photography Instagram wow. and she is predominantly a very soft feminine, um, like floral loving artist. And she actually does a lot of self-portraits. Mm. So I started out as well in photography in self-portraits. So I think this is one of the things I also just love to see when women especially mm -hmm. or just people when people capture themselves yes um it's there's just something about the way that you would capture yourself that maybe somebody else won't mm -hmm. um because it just says a lot and i just i just love the way she just explores light i love the way she explores color mm -hmm. um the way she explores concepts and ideas she moves into different locations. She wow. plays a lot with a lot of like props and clothes and just everything is just there. And it's really, really cool to see her growth um, from just like, I don't know, from the beginning really. It's yeah. been really, really great to see her growth. We've known each other for a long time. Long time. So when there was like a wow. moment to like do an artist spotlight, I was like, right, another girl. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love how one it's so consistent yeah and, and as far as like the way her images are color graded you can almost like <clears throat> the one thing I really love about photographers is being able to spot their their style so if I see a photo I'm like oh this looks like blah blah blah's work and so she has a specific lane that she's created for herself that is absolutely breathtaking. It's almost like again that fantasy it's really dreamlike and airy light and airy yeah um, and it's just absolutely stunning to look at it is because i think that it's not so easy to create soft pastel mm -hmm. pictures it's not i struggle with it 
um, I like more richer muted, like mm-hmm. more richer tones. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I came across, like when it, when when I, whenever I come across her picture, like you said, I know immediately it's hers. Yeah. Yeah. You can just see her picture and like, oh, it's Brandy's picture. Like mm-hmm. you know who the artist is when they take mm-hmm. it. So yeah, I would. That she's my artist spotlight. Ah, oh, so stunning. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And Sam dropped um, Brandy's Instagram in the chat. So if y'all want to go ahead and show Brandy some love, make sure you yes. head over to her Instagram, give her a follow, um, comment on some photos, etc. Share it with a friend. <laughs> you should I... absolutely go say hi to her. It will make her day. <laughs> um, it really, really make her day. I think she's in Texas right now doing some very cool things. So yeah, go, love... go give her a surprise and say hi. I just love how, like you said, like the pastels, but also like everything just looks so light and dreamy and her skin tones are so stunning as well. Like I just. But you can see, so we've gone down quite far. So now you can sort of see like, there's a lot more experimentation happening yes. like down here. Yep, yep. Right? Like she's playing with contrast. She's mm-hmm. playing with a whole bunch of things. She's not, she's still figuring it out. And that's what I love yeah to see i love it when artists are like constantly evolving figuring Mm -hmm. it out trying new things um and then at the top over here it's coming together yep yeah it's tightening up now like she's got a she's got a whole thing she's playing it's really really cool to see yeah yeah she's exploring she's trying concepts yeah I she pretty love. much shoots in her apartment, by the way. So that's another thing that I love is just being so resourceful. Like, yeah, I think sometimes you look at people's work and you're like, oh my goodness, they must have access to everything. <laughs> and a lot of the times, like, you can just create. I'm a huge create from home type of gal. Like, I yeah. shoot in my in my home, and I just feel like it's it's just. I don't know. I think it's 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 creating something that's just easy and not a stressful environment for yourself. Um, but I would love to know how she is able to um, achieve these pastels. Like it is so breathtaking and it's like, it works for each picture, but as a collective, it's like, I'm looking like a, at a gallery that just works and flows so well together. So beautiful work, Brandy, beautiful work. Keep it up. Hey. Yeah, you can give her like some love. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Perfect. So we have Brandy's um, Instagram. I know Sam here saying, love oh, the yes. consistency, love the consistency, consistency, excuse me, and the color palette and mood. Always impressed when people can nail down such a solid and consistent aesthetic in their work. Absolutely. So shout out again to Brandy. She is our artist spotlight. And don't forget that you all can recommend a friend or an artist that you might, you know, that might inspire you for our next artist spotlight. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. So I think we're good to keep going. Yay. Okay. So now that we sort of finished doing, well, I say finished because it was very light. <laughs> you can just, I'm just going to do a big, a bit of a turning off and turning on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You can see the difference. In fact, what I'm going to do is actually make this a group so we can turn the group on and off. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of a sneeze. There might be a sneeze coming. <laughs> okay, if I turn this group on and off, there, you can you see. You can see. You can see everything, yep. You can see there's, like, something extra on her body. Obviously, mm-hmm. we would take time here. Um, what was important for me today was just to show you the concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, like, my goal. Now, another thing I would do is look at the environment. Mm. So not just our subject, but also the area around her. So in this case, and I'll open up a new layer, um, any area, any part of the image that just looks a bit brighter. So for example, over, oh, there we go. Over here, Mm -hmm. maybe over here, uh, definitely over here. Like Mm -hmm. it looks a bit too bright. Mm -hmm. What do you see? Maybe there. Those are, those are the spots right there. Yeah, like those are all fine. Something like that. And then, yeah, just like definitely that one. So like those. I just like to see where like the light is hitting mm-hmm. in a bit of a more uneven way. So I'll just go ahead and use my burn tool. 
change my flow again to quite low, like one percent, and just lightly go over the areas. Yeah, yeah, just like a global bringing it down a bit. See? Yep. Yeah. Just so like doesn't have to be perfect again. Um, you know, but just lightly, lightly brushing just to see. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately, the whole purpose of this exercise is to control the viewer's eye. Now, mm-hmm. where does the viewer's eye go? But to the brightest part of the image. Mm-hmm. So, what are you? What do you do if, if you can? Which is make um, make any part of the image that you want the viewer's eye to go to mm-hmm. first brighter mm-hmm. than the others. You don't want to go crazy with it because then it will look strange and unnatural. <laughs> And this isn't Halloween, so <laughs> so we are gonna go with a more subtle approach. Um, that's why we use a low flow. So anything that subtly, yeah. like, makes them look at the subject first, and then they go, oh. and then yeah. go to the expand to the rest of the photo. And I love that because, like you said, you don't want anything to distract from whatever the main like subject or main purpose of your image is. And so if you're subject is what you want people to see first make them brighter make them stand out more and make sure that nothing else in your photo distracts or takes away from them so you can start there and their eyes should expand out because i do agree when you have those bright spots there my eye goes straight my eye went straight to the left corner specifically and then yeah. down to the rock and then to her <laughs> yeah but now i go straight to her now i go straight to her and then i zoom out and i see the full image and you want to turn your layer on and off. Like you want to see, mm-hmm. like, oh, have I done too much? Do I need to do a bit more? Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, many things. If you just go slowly, you really won't go wrong. And mm-hmm. there's no right or wrong either. There's no right or wrong answer. No. And the whole, I think as long as you just blend, mm-hmm. you can hide a multitude of things. Yeah. See, so now we've done that. And I believe that actually does make a big difference. Yes, it definitely so does. If we turn off our guiding layers, we can then turn it off and on. And see that? Now, I think mm-hmm. I went a bit too over the top on her leg. Mm. See? Yeah. Because my, my my eyes are going to her Straight legs. her leg now. And that's not what we want. But that's why we work non-destructively. So we just hit the black brush on the dodge layer and I just brush away what I did. Um, You can also dodge and burn with the Photoshop tools. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't do that because it is a destructive way of working. And as you can see, I'm making mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, and that's okay. And that's (laughs) okay. You want to leave room for that. You want to leave room from that. All right, so that's pretty much done. I'm just going to burn it a little bit actually and maybe even bring this up here just a tiny bit. Okay, so if I turn this on and off, that's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's the general concept of that. All right, so now pretty much um, after this, there was not much left. All I did was clean up the rest of the scene. I realized Mm -hmm. that there's just a few things that were really distracting me. So for example, anything that was just sort of like over here, Mm -hmm. that got completely like cut out. Mm -hmm. I left a few things in um, and then the last part was adding a little bit of like something to this picture and uh, I'm going to show you what I did. So basically, if I open up this file, which I had downloaded from Adobe Stock, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, select everything in it bring it over, just copy, paste it in, Mm -hmm. and just resize it. Generally, it doesn't have to be like perfect, you want exactly to scale, because we're going to like try and somehow work it into the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, usually this would have been done before, obviously the dodging and burning and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. But um, I don't know, it actually came to me afterwards. (laughs) Like, oh, maybe I could do this and maybe it could be fun. Um, Okay. Because it looks like there was, yeah, just something like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
because this is a image that I selected, I selected this picture um, because of the black background, actually. Because mm-hmm. I know that you that can hide quite quickly mm-hmm. if you just go to the screen um, mode. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. I like had to look at all the options for like dust and dirt and clouds. Um, and I saw this one, which is pretty much what I was looking for. It's like moving dust. Mm-hmm. And then because it was on a black background, I know that if I go to screen mode, the black Everyone background like disappears. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so then I can just open up a layer mask and start blending it into the scene mm-hmm. by just lightly brushing. So here I am just lightly, lightly brushing. And then because it's um, quite sharp, mm-hmm. it's standing out from the rest of the scene. So how would we like blend it in a bit more? Well, we would blur it so I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that layer so we have it in case I make a mistake on this one mm-hmm. so go to filter blur and give it a Gaussian blur but I don't want to like do like a super I mean to be honest that does look really nice <laughs> yeah I wasn't going to give it like a super blur but uh yeah you just want to blur it a little bit but I actually think that did actually look really nice I was yeah like seven. it did it did look really nice and it fits the photo so perfectly doesn't it? I, the reason why I thought of it was because I put dust on her. Mm-hmm. So I felt like, like sand on her. So mm-hmm. I felt like it makes sense to have like some wind mm-hmm. taking that sand away. And so the colors, if I wanted to adjust it, obviously, because I feel like they don't quite fit in yet, mm-hmm. I would go ahead into my color adjustments. Now, because we're running low on time I think Mm -hmm. yeah I'm just going to cover like one or two that I feel like would change anybody's picture so the first one is selective color oh that's my best friend (laughs) yay me and selective color are like this we are one that's my bestie I stand by her yes what is your favorite one like what's your favorite I uh, mode so I just for me when I do any kind of color grading, I just love to use selective color because you can target certain images or sorry, mm-hmm. certain colors in my image and then play with the colors within that the, that color. So yeah. like oh, I started color grading in Lightroom and that was fun, but I didn't feel like I had as much control. So selective color was really great because I could go into my reds and then I felt like, okay, I can remove the science. I can add science. I can add magentas and that mm, is a game changer for all of my color grade. When people ask me, oh, how do I color grade? It's that's usually the number one tool I utilize. Yes. So I would highly recommend anybody who hasn't used selective color before or enough to give it a go. Mm-hmm. Do you know about the whites and neutrals and the blacks? Yes, that? yes, yes, yes. Those are my I don't use neutrals often and I want to start using neutrals more. I use whites and blacks a lot. I use the whites more so to get more of like a vintage kind of look to some of my images. And so Mm -hmm. I'll add like blues or greens to my whites. Blacks are really great to add. Like I might add like some reds or or reds or purple or magenta into those colors, into um, the blacks. Um, But I haven't done much with neutrals. Right. Okay. So the white is for affecting the highlights. Mm Mm-hmm in that image Mm -hmm. the neutral the neutrals the neutrals are for uh, um modifying the Mm midtones and your blacks are for your shadows correct yeah so neutrals i like freaking love so they might become your new bestie Uh, yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and actually the purpose of this was to affect that layer only Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna go ahead and clip it to that layer so now any adjustment i make is only affecting Mm. that layer so i'm going to just move the midtones of this image around a little bit to sort of get it to blend with the rest of the scene and essentially it's just a case of working with the sliders now i'm going to turn this off and on and you can see immediately just by pushing and pulling those sliders and just watching that layer and the ones below uh, the area below it we're just like, we want to set it. Yeah. Um, if I want to check it, go into whites and s- any part, like see if there's anything being affected in the mm-hmm. lighter parts of that image as well. 
I don't really see a lot I of difference. Any, yeah, I don't see you. much, no. But there might be something. In the blacks, yeah. there you go. There you go. I actually don't like that too much because you can mm-hmm. see now it's breaking up and that's mm-hmm. not what we want. So I'll bring that back. I want that fade away. So I, I actually don't think there's anything in the blacks, to mm-hmm. be honest with you, that need to be worked on. Okay. The next thing I would probably do is jump into curves. Now, curves I want to cover really fast again because um, it's something that does really, really help Mm -hmm. knowing about. When you're in curves, you can affect not just the light and dark parts of the image. So you can create a lovely contrast should you choose Mm -hmm. by an S-curve like this. Or you can actually color tone by diving into Mm -hmm. the red, green, and blue channels. Mm -hmm. Now, when you dive into these, and let me click this once more. When you dive into these, you can really explore the um, colors within those individual channels. So if you push this, the reds up, you can see the reds being affected. But if you bring it down, it takes away the red Mm -hmm. from that, which actually looks pretty good. (laughs) And so you want to just play with it by pushing and pulling those points in the red, green, and blue. So if you push the green up, the yellow is being affected. Mm -hmm. If you pull it down, it takes it away. Mm -hmm. So you just want to go ahead and push and pull these to just set, to to set, to create the colors you want, Mm -hmm. but also just like see what's possible Mm because that's also very nice as well. Mm -hmm. So just like that, I'm just moving the slider back and forth. And I feel it's that so, that looks... It, that looks so stunning. It's so much more, like you said, a part of the image. It doesn't feel like it was a separate um, a separate photo that you just added in. And then um, someone had mentioned that they love how the sand hits the stone. So for me, it's a part. It also helps to tell that story. Like you have the dust on her. So it makes sense for wind to be moving towards her um, and moving that sand towards her body. And so I feel like it just helps to elevate the entire story of this image. Yeah, I think it it does. It does something like mm-hmm. you're just playing with different elements. Mm-hmm. And that's where places like Adobe stock Mm -hmm. um really help when to like push your mind out of what you might Mm -hmm. have like this is honestly a very pretty image by itself but you can make it extra Mm -hmm. and so why not have a little bit of fun Fun. exactly okay so then pretty much those those are the things that i would probably do if i wanted to like do one more thing maybe It would be, I'll just duplicate that layer one more time. And maybe this time I might, let's see. Let's see if I duplicate it. Nope. I was going to say maybe this time I could, uh, let's clip everything back to what it was. It unclipped. Another option, if you wanted to, is to go over here to... Filter, blur, motion blur. Mm-hmm. Just to give it a little bit of shape. Yeah. Yeah. See, now that changed as well. So if we turn off the preview, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And if you turn it on, you can see there's some movement. Mm-hmm. You can change the angle of that movement with this um, uh, panel. And actually, I you can change the size, the distance mm-hmm. that it's moving. Yeah. So it's good to play here as well, just in case there's something that, again, helps this look a bit more realistic. So I actually quite like how that looks. Yes, I love that. Motion blur is another um, key for for me in my editing. So that is beautiful. I just, I never, I don't play a lot with, you know, um, stock images and, you know, piecing thing, the the compositing portion of of the photo editing. But now I'm like, huh, like there's so much you can do. And it's so, yeah. it adds so much. And like you said, why not just have that fun? Well, I'm going to try one more thing, which is duplicating that group. And this time, zooming right out, moving it. Moving it. Sort of, just to, just to see if it works. It potentially might not work. <laughs> and we have about like 
we're ooh, we're about three minutes out. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Gosh, okay, let's not do that. <laughs> All right. So now, say for example, we've got three minutes. In three minutes, I want to show you what I do for social media because I think that's really important that we cover this topic.、Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the image. So, say we're happy with everything, we've done a good job, we've saved it. Then our next step is flattening it. So I'll just go ahead and flatten it. Now I will change my image size, and the size that I change it to is I like to change it to 2,400 pixels、mm-hmm. on the longer side.、Uh, no, 2,048 pixels on the longer side. Resolution, you can change it to 150, and some people might even change it to 72.、Mm-hmm. Um, I think I would just pretty much leave it at 150. The resampling, I usually pick the bicubic smoother enlargement function, and then what that does is, I think it just makes the whole process of resizing it a little bit smoother.、Mm-hmm. So, and just it just I, I like the way it looks personally, so that's why I've chosen that. Once it's been resized, I will go ahead and duplicate that layer one more time,、mm-hmm. and this time I will run a sharpening、um, function over it. So a very common one is to duplicate the layer, go to other, high pass.、Mm-hmm. In high pass, you would pretty much just pick a radius where the outline is shown, but it's not like so. Much that the color is like breaking through.、Mm-hmm. So outside Some, of high pass, is this is this usually the one that you utilize, or what would you? Sh-、uh... Okay, yeah. So the outside of high, that's pretty much what I would do. I、mm-hmm. would use high pass. Perfect,、yeah. perfect. So I would say for the things that we didn't catch, I would say if y'all want to go ahead and head to Bella's Instagram, connect with her if you have any additional questions. But this was an incredible Adobe Live. Thank you so much, Bella, for your time and for showing us. Um, li- you've taught me so much. I can't even go into everything you've taught me today. <laughs> But just a quick reminder for y'all as we sign off: make sure you stick around for the creative encore of the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Julia Vega, immediately followed by day two of Brandy with、uh, day two of Brandy with Kenzie Green. So, thank y'all so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the live. Catch the replay on YouTube and Behance, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.